Welcome back. In today's video, we're going to be doing the T-800 endoskeleton from the movie Terminator. As usual, you'll need a pencil, ruler and an eraser. Let's begin. First thing we're going to do is dot in the middle of the page. And then we're going to measure, have a look, um, five centimeters to the left and then five centimeters to the right. So a 10 centimeter line, we a dot on a five. And then we might as well do five centimeters above, five centimeters below, that's gonna be a circle. So we're side grip, we're gonna draw a circle. Like this, draw a half circle. And that is not a bad circle, but you can use a cup or something. Or you can use one of these, I believe. Yeah, just draw a circle with that, but you end up with a dot in your page. So just draw a freehand circle if you can. And then we're gonna draw three lines vertically. Oops, I missed. And the third line. So you've got three vertical lines, and then we're going to draw a line in the middle. Line across the middle. Like we do usually in portraits, we're going to do a line just a bit up there for the nose. So we need to draw. Same principles, a little bit to the left, a little bit to the right, and then marking the nose. So that's like a typical eye, if you were to draw an eye in. From there we're going to draw two vertical lines for the nose. So down, that will be as nose area. So from here, you draw a diagonal line on both sides, like this. Preferably in line. Let's try that again, actually. It's done it way too steep. So, you want the same sort of triangle as there. Just so like that. Right, and then this eye is going to go to around here. So it's a very big eye, where this goes in, wants to come out to about here, so it's slightly longer this one, so this one, that one's shorter, this one's slightly longer, and that'll get a bit of depth of the eye. Then as it swings round, we're going to go all the way to the end of the line, it's going to come down, and then it curves. like that and then you can draw the big robot eye so again it's another circle like this so I'm going to draw a big red well it will be red when you color it for the machine so now I want to do the same on this side I'm going to slightly come in off this line, just like I did on this side. And then you're going to curve down. What I am going to do to help us, or help me, bottom of this eye, I'm going to draw a line straight across to make sure that we've got the same width. Same again here, going up. And then down. And then it's going to curve again here around this line and it's going to start sweeping in to the middle and 
I'm just trying to make sure they're similar. Not after different. But here we've got two eyes in there, right? Same again, robotic eye, ear. Big red. Machine eye. Now from here I'm going to draw in diagonal line, both sides. Have a dot in the middle. And then a little round half circle here. And curve this line to that. Same on this side to join it together. I'm going to double a line up here across. And I'll do the same on this side as I usually do. For this particular tutorials, I tend to do the same on both sides. It's usually symmetrical. Unless you're drawing a half machine, half human, you might have some slight differences. So same on this side, straight line, curve it at the end. Now here has got like dents, so these show some depth, like shading or something. So we'll just stick one in either side for now. We basically want to get the shape in so the nose comes down. So I'm going to draw like tubes here. It's going to come down to this much far. So on this side, and then curve all the way up. It's the same distance. Try and put them in line. Then a line across in line with the eye, where the eyes meet right here. Then here is like two nostrils, so the nostrils come down. I like this, probably from this corner if you see little corners. Draw a line down here faintly. This is how big we're going to do the nostrils. On both sides. I curve around in the middle of a very thin layer so it joins like a skull. Curve them round and up. Then inside that they have more metal work. Mm. We it being a machine, it's very difficult to see because there's a lot of glare going on on the metal work. This one goes up, I'll do it similar to that one. Join it out of that. Might do this a little bit thicker. I don't know mind about it, we'll here. Another square. We've got the mouth area coming down, which goes like this. So he's got cheekbones. Now his eyes come out from here down. Then it's like a diagonal, it's like an eyelid on the robot, robotic machinery. Same on this side, comes out and down. As it comes down, this one wraps round for the cheekbone and goes up. 
and then joins to that. So we can make his eye a little bit wider. And bring his nose a little rounder. On this side of the nose it goes up and there's a black part here. This side has a marking as well. And there is a mouth on both sides here, right? The mouth piece. Uh, so we draw two circles here. Round about here is where I'm going to draw a curved line like this, like a smiley face. And then it's going to curve in like that on both sides. That piece will come down in line with this eyeball. So you want them to go that far apart. this part of the cheekbone so it comes further up of the nostrils it comes up to about I'd say here so same on that side yeah so go further up and then it's going to curve for the cheekbones and then that goes round and so does that. So it's like a skull, like we're drawing a skull. So basically now we're going to do the skull the same distance from the teeth to the top of the forehead is how high we're going to do the top part of the skull. So draw a line around about here for the skull. Actually not quite that high. We want to go in line with the nose, so that being the nose there to the forehead, so just slightly shorter. Which is what we usually do, nose to eyes. There, that's going to be the top. Right, from here. We can just fit, fill in some blanks, I suppose. Got like a big, with a big M shape here, or a big W. Like that. <coughs> and we'll draw like a little bit of shine you got here, a little bit of shine on, on the skull. Here is where the chip goes in. Anybody who's seen? Terminated movies knows the chip is in the head. One of the CPUs. So for the top of the head, the angle we're drawing it, it don't want to be a full circle. It wants to be a sort of flatter circle like this to show its how show the angle of the top of the head. So it's going backwards. So it's kind of like an oblong. And then inside another one for the middle part. And that is where the chip goes. And then across from that, I might want to tilt that a little bit. Like that. So that's a sort of like the shape you're going for. Kind of like a frisbee. With that, let's shine across here. Shine on the top. It comes to about here. So you dot there and dot here. That's where we're going to try and curve the head. So we're side grip. We're going to curve that round as the top of the head. If 
From here, I'm going to draw a line up. Well, the vertical lines that we drew, I'm just going to put it in, darken them a bit. Because from them, we're going to step out about half an inch, is it? I would say. So just shorter than half an inch. One centimetre. And then we're going to curve this up the side of the head. So we'll do the same on this side, one centimetre gap. And curve this. That's the top of his head. Now here, it doesn't just go straight down because like most, this is where the ears would be. So it's going to get slightly wider. So in line with this part, we're going to get wider. Same on this side, so the eye socket wider. This side's more square than the other one. And this side. Similar shadow you can't really see. Let's get some more details down the bottom. Let's work on the jaw a little bit now. So yeah. On the eye. So from the eye. And a dot that much. Both sides. Then it comes in diagonal, diagonal on this side, so and then it's going to turn up to the cheekbone. And the same on this side, it goes up and down and around. Same here. Now we're getting onto complicated mechanical pieces in his jaw that moves his mouth. Here in the cheekbones, he's got lots of metal work. Tell you what, we'll draw it um, just lightly. These being the teeth. All right, so one line there for the top set of teeth. Then another line, same width for the bottom set of teeth. So about the same gap there. And then beneath that we've got the chin. Which I'm going to say is quite this. The chin is maybe a bit bigger than the teeth. A bit longer. So we're looking at about that for the jaw. Then don't forget when we get the jaw in and around we've then got the neck spokes that will make it look wider. So I think we're looking good, I think we're on target at this point. So shall we put the chin in? Right, from the chin, this is where mechanical comes in. So we're just going to draw as guidelines so that we've got an example of where we're going to draw as things. Right, the chin is going to curve around here. So as you can see, I've got the curve of the chin right in line with the cheekbone. 
on both sides. And then we're going to go up and we'll um, put some shaping on it when we've had the detail, but for now we'll just draw it basic. So it's straight up and down. So here, same on here. It's come out a little bit, just like that. And it's down on an angle. So it's the bottom set of teeth here is where the jaw is going to turn. So same on this side, bottom set of teeth, dot there. And draw that line up. Then we're going to turn diagonal to the middle. Now it may look slightly out of line with that one, but that is because... I'm not sure why, but this is why. Here we've got like a spoke coming out. On this side there isn't. So this might be where the neck connects. Because based on his reference photo, this is how it looks. The next thing here, I'm going to draw in curves for the teeth. So let's draw some teeth in. Down, round, and up. This is the front teeth as they usually are the biggest. Comes in nice, little curve on the top, like that. And the same on this side, we do this one a little bit more flat on the bottom, and not as wide, then it comes up. This one's a little bit more square because of the darkness. I want to give too much of a gap between the teeth, but there is a little gap. And this tooth connects off this one, slightly behind it. Then up. How many teeth we want to fit in, right, from the left side, so that being the first set of tooth. We're going to count in one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm going to fit in six teeth from here, so one, two, three, four, five, six up to here. And they're going to slightly get narrower. I'm going to try and make them go further back. So this one curves, but doesn't curve as, as long, so we're going to get the curves shorter. And then this one curve higher up. So it's going further back, so we can create some depth. Same again, this next thing goes up. Try to follow the path of the gums, where the gum line is. The bottom part is round. And this one's short, you don't see as much of this one because it's getting further down the line, the pecking order. And again, this one's just like a triangle top. And then narrow again, gets thinner. And then the last two, if we're gonna fit in, again, you can't see much, it goes up in a sharp triangle and down. So that's the left side. We want to do similar on this side. So this next tooth, there is a gap. This one goes up and down. So big triangle top. This one's the second biggest tooth along the order. So it's a nice flat square. It's going back. So make sure you stick to the curve. Make the teeth go down gradually in order. Next one, it looks like a bottom tooth, but it's not. It's a flat top, going down. It's got a chip on that tooth, but it's slim at the bottom, a bit wider at the top. Next one, it's more on an angle, so we've got a point again. Can't really see the top of this gum because there's a lot of shadow. And then that curves around to oh sharp one this. Down looks like an iceberg. Curving, following this line typically. And up, oh, thin sliver. 
So now we've got one, two, three, four, yep. Yeah. One, two, three, four, and again, we're gonna fit six in. So another one that's narrow. And the last one coming around like that. So we have got six, one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Just look a bit more gappy on this side. So then next, we're gonna do the bottom set of teeth. Which come in right here. I think it'll be too long if we go to the bottom of there. So I'm just gonna draw a thin sliver right above it. And I think that'll work out nicely actually. So the bottom set of teeth are not as wide as the top two. So we're going to go down like this. Same on this side. Bit, a bit of shadow between them. So up like that. Yeah, I want to make this 3D. On the bottom set of teeth, let's see how many we've got. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six again. This side, one, two, three, four, five, six again. So we're going to be doing the same six. Six to the left. It's going to curve around. We don't want a massive gap between them. And that's going to curve down. And another one. This one going around as well, around that block. So we've got one, two, three. We've got three more to fit in. We need to change the angle. Let's go like that. Yeah. That one goes wider. So thin sliver on the teeth. Make them go further back. So the line goes up and arches back. Another one. It's nice getting thinner. Curvy top. The last one's a bit fatter. Like that. And we've got black shadow around that. Got shadow in between that as well. So when you do go around it at the end, in an ink or when you're colouring it in, these bits here I'm just going to shade in, because I will go over it in black later. All these gaps here will make it look a lot better when it's got the black lines through it, like them, the gaps in between are a bit darker. These are darker through here, they'll be darker underneath. This one curves round. Like that's going to get depth, that line there, for the jaw. Never start on the end because you'll run out of room in the middle. I just want to get that angle in. So yeah, that would be one. Two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, six. Yep. So it's like curves. Cap at the bottom comes up like that. That one looks better because you can see it's like it's coming through the root of the gum. Not sure row, uh, endoskeletons have gums, but they must do because they do bleed. And they've got the flesh on. Curve another one. This one's getting thinner up. There it is. Cause the shadow. So we'll do another triangular top. Curve it. Last long one here. And then 
that one's going to go down. Try and put a bit of guns in these. That last one comes down. This is on a right angle. Curve it round. See the side of the two from that. And then it's dark. So that's the teeth in which usually would be pretty tough. So you've got the two teeth in. Bottom of the chin. We've got. I'm going to do cool lines like that. The whole, oof. Here we've got like an upside down trapezium. Like that. Double the line up for some detail. <clears throat> Here. So down, down, down for a right curve. So off this part of the chin gum goes down to about here, curving it. Then here, we've got like a D. Curves around like that, but that would all be shaded black. I'm just going to colour it in so you know. So don't confuse us. And I've got a similar one on the other side as well. But it's, you can't really tell there's a shadow on it. But we'll draw it in as if we can see it. And colour it in. Then at side of this, that sets you up nicely right there. It's where the, the spokes are on the jaw. And this curves round. Some robotic piece. Here you've got, next to this sharp bit, you've got comes out an angle, side, then down, and that goes out there, this is like the plate, like a plate. So here you can see like this bit here, where the spokes from the neck go. The couple. And that one's slightly thicker, that goes up to that middle bit like that and then you'll have the same on that side this side the little one here then one right on the corner of the jaw that goes right up So here, just below the jaw, it comes out, and then it's a thinner tube in between them. Then you'd have your trapezium. Yeah, got a line. And here. Up here we've got a square on the side, but it's not straight, it's more like a rom is it a rhomboid? No. And diagonal square types. A little triangular piece here. Do you know colour in this fills some gaps? <laughs> Double line up here gives it depth if we do that, makes it 3D. That comes down a little bit, yeah. Huge shade there in a little bit. It's dark inside. 
some markings here and a cross we're on to the spokes and what we're going to do is we've got pipes coming out right here on both sides and then from it we're going to draw a side cylinder like it's connecting then from here we have got diagonal lines coming up we've got one here for a circle this goes up to here like dark shade in here and then a few things come out because this is where this is going to connect into the next spoke so it might have like a ball on that that connects And that cuts around there. So we've got another shape here. This goes up. We just need to fill in the gaps with a rectangle, a longer one, and then a little like square there. Then here again, so it looks like a ball connects the joining piece and another tube. And that goes up. Now on this side, and then here you've got. another shape here on that so this has a shape coming round and down that's got that robotic part in I'm worried about the lighting it seems very dark in here I can't see picture right so from here and draw in where it is the chin and expand this part like I said we're going to add the detail in so it curves a little bit then goes out so it's like a jaw and then it comes up weaves in a little bit and then out and then this bit does and I'm going to cut that out a little bit Further. Right, it's so on this side. We've got. Let's do another line there for the robot. Here you can see glare. Some finer details to shave that in a little bit. So on this side it's very similar, that comes down, here you've got a connecting piece again. So I've got to fit this side into that now. So, I mean it's dark, you can't see, I'll probably fill that in dark, so shade that in, more or less, like that. Same on this side, it comes up, you see more of it, but then that will be darker. There's a bit there. So yeah, it connects onto like a ball that makes it turn. And you've got this part. So I want to do it similar angle. So here, we need to put in that. So we're going to just draw a line up. 
comes out here and that's going to go down cylinder like that little connection piece another cylinder spoke coming through then we've got a side piece like a rectangle then a little piece that might be damaged there that connects and that's going into a whole area well, here this goes up to the top part of the teeth that one so I just need to extend that bit then shoots up like that this whole area is dark I'll shade that bit in it's dark 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 all the way to the teeth so around here and rub that bit out Let me just use my ruler to get this in line. It doesn't need to be in line, but I just want it in line. So there, so. And that's rounded. Right. That one's a sharp piece anyway, because you can't see it, so it don't have to be exactly the same, because it goes in different areas. That's darker, but they both lead up there. But you can't see because of the shadow here you've got some like cylinder pieces flaps on the machinery but again covered by dark pieces and then here you've got like a circular maybe a nut or bolt connecting that and then it's shaded round dark black you can't really see how it shaded in between colour that in darkened colour then at this point you've got we're going to have to widen this jaw part I believe but there is no spleen just move it over slightly like that so it'll come out a bit more like that because this does come up the side bit I said it did it were different on this side as a, a longer piece that connects around yeah that's good that let me add another piece So here, off this piece, yeah, I'm going to draw like a pyramid upside down, I'm calling this, or like a ladder, or a peg or something, lots of analogies, so it goes down like that, so like an upside down A, actually a capital A, if you turn it the other way around, then from this has a, a pipe coming out. So there's a dark bit here, which I'm shading like these bits, and then it's like a wishbone or something going up to that. And then that will follow up and comes around to there. And then I'm going to shade that bit in like that here. There's lots going on, but you can't see it. You can't make heads or tails of that part. But it looks okay the way we're doing it. So from here, you've got the tubes. Here I'm going to do it. This is a bit square, actually, rather than round. So we can make it square like this. And then go up. And then same here. And it has a rounded 
tube coming out of that. The neck piece comes down outside of these black markers, so in line with them spokes there. And that is on both sides. So again, where the spokes are on this side. Um, now actually just here in line with this one that comes down this is the neck part I think so draw that under and it's rounded so around <clears throat> neck piece like that then inside it is circular rounded on the edges comes down in the middle straightens up and then back out same on this side and then there's another piece in from here comes down very difficult to see this is like shadow so I might have to get another reference photo to follow from but we can just leave this bottom part like this at the moment so you can shade in the eyes if you want at this point because this would be dark blackish just lightly shade it because may or may not colour it in a pencil uh, in pen or go around it in a biro kind of like to make them look like colouring pages when I'm done Shade this side in there just so we know which parts are dark. Right here on the side, we've got some shapes to draw. Here we've got like an upside down triangle. And it's curved. And then like a hole on the side. Like a circle. Oblong shape. To try and give it the depth. And on this side it's very dark. You can't really see much. I might shade this in. Here it goes in a bit, we've got that in. On this side, out that triangle in. We've got that square. Here it goes down. Shade that a bit then. On this side, we want to draw up. This bit I'm going to extend out so it goes down up and round all the way to the end so if we just rub that line out that'd be a good point to rub out this circle where we did the guideline so just draw, rub the guidelines out that are overlapping in areas if you can That will do. Some little details bring on the eye here. It's got like a square, a rectangle, and that bit. The shading on that. It's 
the middle piece. It's dark in the middle. And there again, there's more dark in here. Shave that bit in, and then here. Sort of like the nostrils, this is all dark. So just going to shave that bit in. There's a little bit of the rim at the bottom. Just shave that in, more or less. Here it goes a bit up, then in. Dark on that side, dark there, same there, that's before. Well, there's not really much more to add to the machine. We've got all the details in, we'd just really be shading it in. We're putting some details on it. Scuff marks will go a long way. Put a shadow under here. I'm literally just colouring in some shading points, which I might just get that little bit extra 3D look of depth we're missing. I'm pretty happy at that for my Terminator. So that I would leave it at that and then it would be for you to colour in as is detailed really as we're gonna go. So that's the T800 endoskeleton.